thank you to Chef for their generous donation as a YouTube member. Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and welcome to Sakura Angels. I have no idea what this is, but there's a fuckload of Sakura games. I've never played one, and it's on my family share, thanks to my brother Aaron. Um, so we're gonna play this and see why he would have so many of these games in his, uh, library. Sorry if you feel called out right now, bro. Uh, <laughs> so I just picked one. I don't know if it's the first one. I have no fucking clue. I don't know if this is a visual novel, if this is a fucking... I don't know, I don't know what the hell. You ever played a Sakura game, Bree? No. No? Ooh, we got some jazzy mystery music. Every night, I have the same dream. Every night, I'll always be brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning, I'll wake up with no memory of this place at all until the next time I fall asleep. Ah, uh, oh, Ross. Not a single night has went by without my consciousness being dragged into this abyss. Rick Rose! Rose! This realm is devoid of light, so much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face, no matter how desperately I wave it. That's not how you ta you'd move it closer to your face. You wouldn't just wave it around like you just don't care. If only I could read this. <laughs> The concept of sound was just as absent, my steps silent, and my distressed cries swallowed by the bordering darkness as quickly as they had left my mouth. I am in a bleak, barren wasteland of nothingness. Spending my prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt even my own existence. Yet despite my feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I know that I'm not alone. Something is watching me. You know, when I saw the pretty anime girls on the fucking title card, I really did not expect this. <laughs> Stalking me from the shadows. I can't say for sure what it is, but every once in a while I'll catch sight of something from the corner of my view. A pair of burning bright eyes fixated purely on me. They hate me, despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. I know they want nothing more than to lash out and attack me, but something is holding them back. A force they truly despise. Invisible chains that bind and restrict them from the one thing that is on their mind. At first, when I began dreaming about this place, the eyes were distant, like glimmering stars. But with each passing night, the eyes seemed to inch ever closer and shine ever brighter. I think whatever force has been holding them from me is beginning to fade. What will happen when these eyes reach me? I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid, but everything I experience here is so vivid. None of the usual murky haze that shrouds such dreamlike environments seem to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I could feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me, enough to incite a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll, uh, it'll end. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that is how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful burning eyes that always seem, always kept just out of sight before, I'm suddenly confronted by them. Never before have they been so close, never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrowed, piercing gaze roots me to the spot, and sh a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then, from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads, just as sinister as the eyes. Eh? Huh? It's so close. I hear Japanese? What? Is, what's happening? I can practically taste the freedom. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy, for your days are numbered. 
and then everything shall change. Uh, I imagine that's what the voice is saying, but okay. So I'm sorry. I'm speaking over a voiceover. Ah, we are in our bedroom. How unusual for stories like this to start. Um, hello. Uh, Oh, it's, it's the ellipses is so small and the text box is so faded. I couldn't fucking see it. Ugh, my head is killing me. These morning migraines are the worst. Every morning, without fail, I always wake up to a sensation not unlike my skull being pounded by a jackhammer. Thump, thump, thump. It's almost like a heartbeat. I wonder where that would be coming from. I feel like my head is going to split open. It's weird though, because even though the pain is so intense, because even though the pain is so intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes for me to get up, takes me to get up and head for school, the pain is usually reduced to just a dull throb at the back of my skull. By then, I hate those ones when it's like at the like at the base of the spine. I fucking hate that shit. So it, it isn't too much of a hassle in the grand scheme of things, but it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. I just find it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway, enough pondering these weird mysteries, it's time to tackle the day! After a moment of wrestling with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. Quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early. Too early. Oh, another protagonist that hates mornings. Are you gonna complain about the heat at some point soon, too? Holy Christ, I thought I was taking a, a divergence from this shit. <laughs> if I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least a good way into the afternoon. <sighs> but sadly, life just isn't that wonderful. Pulling back the curtains to let the light flood into my room, I suppress the urge to let out a hiss. Almost blind myself in the process. The pro this is... It's a bit cringy. A bit cliche. Too bright. The rest of my time getting ready is spent fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the more problematic to put on when you're half asleep. If you gotta put it on every day, just leave it tied. Like... I don't know. Are you allowed to do that? Uh, do that with any tie? I, I I never wear a tie, but the ties I have have been tied for at least two decades already. <laughs> oh god, I think I've actually got my hand stuck in it. Oh god! Cloth has surrounded your hand. What would you ever do? Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever. I finish putting on the tie, the rest of my uniform complying peacefully with me. Unable to find a comb, I settle for just flattening my hair down with my hands. Blinking into the mirror, I am left stand staring back at someone with messy black hair. Eh, it's close enough. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Oh, what a nice kitchen. Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs, and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I'm greeted by silence. The kitchen is empty. My god! The thrills! A familiar scene for me. My parents are what you might call workaholics. Basically, they spend more time at their respective jobs than they ever do here. I only ever get to catch them during the evening when they're while they're eating, and then everyone is off to bed, and the cycle repeats. The text is broken. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I understand they have to work in order to keep us living comfortably, so I don't hate them for it. It just gets... I don't know... Lonely? I don't know. There's no use moping about it. It's been like this for years, so I don't know why I'm, I was getting all emotional about it now. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. It's amazing how fast you can adapt to that sort of stuff when you're starving. I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy to eat for breakfast, so I'll just settle with for toast. Oh, the, 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 you're gonna run out in a rush with toast to your mouth? Standard anime style. You can never go wrong with toast. You can, actually. You can burn it. Uh, you can also choke on it and die. There are many ways you can go wrong with toast, as a matter of fact. You could use wheat bread. Um, I love wheat bread! 
Don't you shit on wheat bread! <laughs> help me! No! Help! No! No, help me! Okay, so you might be able to go wrong with Toast. Yeah, <laughs> you heard assassin. I have sudden traumatic flashbacks to when the toaster erupted into flames. Oh. <laughs> this is so fun. Oh, man. Ah, oh, what a day that was. But I've learned from my mistakes now. It won't happen a second, uh, a third time. How quirky. Yes. Oh. Having devoured the only slightly charred toast, it's a dial. Like... <laughs> Just set it to one or two, and that's good. <laughs> How do you... Christ! I sling my bag over my shoulder before starting for the front door. I give the empty house one last look over before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one to say goodbye to. Say goodbye to the house. Fuck it. But again, this has been the same for every weekday morning since forever ago. I would say the, the background art is quite impressive in this. The sun is shining high in a cloudless sky. There's clouds up there. Don't fucking lie to me. I see some fucking clouds. Unless someone is throwing mashed potatoes really, really high. Birds are chirping overhead. Waves of students are passing by, happily chatting with one another as they all make their way to school. It's all so horrible. Oh, we're bitter too. I'm not much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom how everyone can be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. I mean, it's taking all of my willpower just to be able to put a foot in front of the other without just crumpling to the ground. I just have to hope the breakfast kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. This dude's fucking pathetic. More ellipses. While keeping my head down and my eyes glued to the ground as I soldiered on, I suddenly notice that the vibrant atmosphere from before is gone. Silence has completely taken over. My step's the only thing making any noise. The air is still. Huh. That's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I'm met with an unsettling sight. The street is deserted. No students. No cars. Even the cheerful chirping of the birds is gone. What? I hurry on forward, hoping to at least run into somebody. Anyone. Even the sun's once golden ray seems muted. The world tinged in dreary tones. But there still isn't a cloud in the sky. Yes, there is! I see clouds, damn you! It also still looks pretty bright! Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. I need to just... A splitting pain a splitting pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Like a searing poker being thrust through my skull. A headache? Now? Nothing is making any sense. Yeah, random headaches. Those that's just baffling to imagine. Desperately trying to keep myself upright as I clutch my head my head my hand to my head, I stagger forwards. Unlike the headaches from before that gradually died down, this one only seems to be getting worse! Thump, thump, thump. It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. This is a fuck of a headache. Either that or you're a wimp. I can hardly even think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, it explodes. Just pfft, end of game. You got exploded. Through gritted teeth and a pained expression, I see it. Something that shouldn't exist. It clearly does, as confirmed by my own terrified eyes. Oh! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> there he is! A oh, creepy crawly! <laughs> Four eyes and claws and the same texture repeated over and over again. Azazel? What the fuck is Azazel? Azazel is a goat-headed demon of Christian lore. Christian lore? Yeah. Still wondering where the cute anime girls fit into all this. Oh, well, here comes Azaz... Az Azazamel. A monster. That's the only word that can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking, grotesque mass of flesh with gnarled fangs and red-slitted eyes seething with hate. 
The closest thing I can relate it to would be a dog. But no dog I know of is three times the size of me. It's form practically eclipsing the sun. How did this fucking thing sneak up on you? It starts with flared nostrils, something like steam being exhaled out. Given its tense stance and the fact that it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. There's literally no one else around. It's fair to assume that you're fucked. But... Why? The hell is it? Where did it come from? Why does it want me? What's its birthday? Have you thought of asking it how it feels? Why don't you talk to the monster? You might learn something. A million and one questions raced through my head, but I bet none of them are how he feels today. You know, so self-centered. But I doubt I'm going to get any answers from this... this... thing. So rude. So it's done nothing to you. You're being so mean. There's only one thing I can do when presented with such odds, and that's to... Fuck off! Oh, yeah, get the hell out of here! Yeah! Flee, of course! I'd be an idiot to attempt anything else. When confronted with something that defies everything I know about nature and has that has a look in his eyes that says, I'm gonna eat you, it's basic human instinct to want to run. You know shit. Not giving the beast any more of my time, I spin on my heel and hurtle myself in the opposite direction. Any fatigue I might have felt earlier is magically gone as I pump my legs frantically. It's amazing what fear can do to pep up your senses. I run as fast as I can, but in my haste I twist my foot at a bad angle, crumpling into a heap of the floor. Of course you do! No one runs right when they need to. Ignoring the nasty scrapes across my knees, I desperately try to heave myself up off the floor, but it's useless. You're a million pounds, apparently. I'm a complete wreck. I can hear the beast rampaging just behind me, having given chase. The fear of impending death is making my limbs useless, my scattered mind unable to give them any clear commands. The only thing I can do... Jesus, this should have been another fucking... <laughs> the text box is fucked! The only thing I can do is turn my head around to meet my incoming demise. The beast stomping so hard across the ground that cracks spread out with each step. It's... It's over. Right before the beast can connect with me and bring my life to a grisly end, a dazzling radiant light floods my vision, engulfing both me and the monster. The beast stops in its tracks, a guttural cry escaping it before it vaporizes before my eyes. What? What the hell just happened? Can we select the voice acting language? It does not appear we can. So I'm gonna still be saying what is being said, but you'll be able to at, le at least hear it. Jeez, that was a close one. You can tell I want to be a voice actor. Are you all right? <laughs> a cheerful voice chirps. A welcome sound after the terrors of that... the thing. Don't talk to him! We have to leave before... And then another voice that's less cheerful. In fact, they sound angry more than anything. Mm-hmm. Well, who's angry? Oh my! There's the cute anime girls! About fucking time. Where have you been with your ill-fitting shirts? Seriously, that just looks painful. The light soon fades, revealing my saviors. Oh, this is definitely the last thing I was expecting. Two girls, roughly my age, stand before me. I blink several times before I scrub at my eyes, hoping things might be a, make a little more sense. This can't be real. Having more trouble believing these girls are actually standing before me more than I did the monster. Wielding weapons and costumes taken straight out of a fantasy book, and it's all mu all a bit much for my brain to attempt to process. What? What the heck is that? Was that? Sorry. A shadow. <laughs> the. Uh, if I keep playing this, I might just go ahead and turn off the voice acting, and because, eh, whatever. Let me know what y'all think. The more cheerful of the two simply says that to me. Her stance relaxing some. 
Uh, huh? Is that supposed to explain everything? I glanced out of my feet where my own shadow stretches, but the girl bursts into a giggle. <laughs> Not your own shadow, silly. That thing we just took care of, which you're welcome for, by the way, is what we call a shadow. The physical manifestation of all the hatred and negative emotions that must that might lurk in one's heart. Normally, they're not so aggressive during the day, though. It was really out for you. We're usually pretty good at nabbing them before they get to you, but this one completely took us by surprise. I'm happy we got here in time. You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm I'm fine, but is that things went bad enough that we had to reveal ourselves to him? Now you're just casually blabbing away things that no normal person should have a right to know. Have you lost your mind? I'm cut short by the more aggressive looking of the pair, whose expression had grown darker and darker as the cheerful one had spoken. Looking like she's unable to take it anymore, she exploded, causing both of us to jump. Oh, but he looks so confused. And now that he's seen one of the shadows firsthand, don't you think it's a just a little too late for us to quietly slip back into the shadows? I mean, you're using shadows in multiple different ways there. You'd be a little linguistically confusing, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Her eyes narrow into a frightening glare. It's clear she isn't happy. I picked up on that too, but I don't think she has anything to counter that. See? You worry too much. We'll only tell him what he needs to know. Nothing more, nothing less. The upbeat girl brings her attention back to me, a sparkle in her eye. Right, so Kenta, where were we? Oh, look at them, they're, they're so cute. Uh, we were, wait, how do you know my name? Huh? Oh. Whoops. She puts a hand to her mouth as if she as if to try and take back the words. The questions continue to pile up, and I still haven't gotten any answers. Becca. You idiot! Whap! The serious one wraps her fist against the other's head, uh, who sticks her tongue out in a sort of teehee my bad kind of way. So you guys know me? seen them in my life. Given how they look, I definitely think I'd have remembered them. Well, we don't know you personally, but we've been watching over you for a while now. You've become quite the point of interest recently, you know. Me? Heck, did I ever do to get so much attention? As far as I know, I'm just an average student who lives an average life until things got crazy. Doing average things. Though after this, I guess I can't really call my life average anymore. Mm-hmm. Can't really go into details, because, you know, top secret and all. But let's just say it's not in our best interest for you to fall into the wrong hands. You wouldn't believe how much effort we've been putting into keeping you safe, you know. Actually, I'm kind of relieved we finally get to meet. So you can finally appreciate all our hard work. As awesome and cute as the voice acting is, I gotta turn it off. Cause I fucking I I I I cannot imagine how kind of frustrating it must be to fucking have two people talking at once in your ear. So sorry about that. Sorry to the voice actors. I know you put in a lot of hard work here. You deserve the recognition, but I don't understand what you're saying, so I'm sorry. She beams at me, leaning in perhaps a little bit too close. I... She's throwing so much at me here, I can hardly think straight. Just... Who the heck are you guys? Hmm? She falls deep into thought, her nose scrunching up. I guess she's choosing her words carefully as to avoid another brutal assault from her partner. Think of us as your guardian angels, okay? That voice choice is way funnier now that I'm hearing that only. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm sorry. 
Saying that, she gives her bow gives her bow a flourish, and it shatters between her fingers. What? Oh, her bow a flourish. Moments later, the shattered pieces of the bow begin to gather behind her. The shards piecing back together rapidly until I, until finally form they form a pair of wings on her back. The wings, while not strictly attached to her, at least seem to function as they sway in the breeze and give off a glimmer every now and then. Wait, are they actually angels? Nay, they are but men! <laughs> Let me get this straight. To start from the beginning, you, <laughs> that thing that attacked me, that monster you call those shadows? Yep. And these shadows have supposedly been hunting for me for a while now. Mm-hmm. Because apparently, if they catch me, it'll be bad for unspecified reasons. Yep. Really bad. And you guys, whoever you are, have been combating that com combating them from the shadows to keep me safe from harm. She nods enthusiastically. Takes it looks like I'm I I've just about got a grip on what the, this whole thing is. Even if it was a little sparse on details. Knowing all this, it brings me to the conclusion that I have no choice to believe them. These girls have lost it. No, they they know what's going on. You you just gotta accept this at this point. If it's lunacy, it's better to just give into it. As crazy as all this sounds, I really can't deny the evidence before me. That monster was definitely real. I have no reason to doubt these girls who destroyed that thing right before my eyes. Okay. So, uh, what happens now? Hmm. Well, now that the shadows have gotten more aggressive, I really don't think we can go back to our old job of watching you from afar. We were lucky to have just barely caught that to catch that thing just now, after all. Somehow I don't like the sound of that, or what it might imply, at all. So, we'll be parting ways for now. But expect us to be keeping an extremely close eye on you from now on, okay? Bye bye for now! And there they go! Happy as they go, she gives me a wink and a wave before taking off in the other direction. Her less enthused partner simply turns her head from me with one last humph before following after her. I'm soon left completely alone within the street, where just moments ago my entire world had been spun on its head. I. Did all that just happen? Yeah, oh, geez, all this we'll have to wait for later, though. Right now, I have to focus on a much on the bigger issue: being late for school. I break into a sprint because my legs apparently work now as I try to make up for lost time, all the while hoping that I'll never run into those two again. Uh, I got a feeling you're gonna run into those two again. But, not until the next episode, if there is one, uh, <laughs> well, um, this seems to be a visual novel, didn't, I, I really didn't expect that, um, I just picked a random game from, uh, my fucking family share on Steam, and I just happened to pick a fucking visual novel, so, cool, <laughs> Uh, little cliche in the beginning, little, little typical, but, uh, sounds like it has some, uh, interesting stuff bubbling beneath the surface, so, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Um, let me know what y'all think. Uh, have you played this before? Uh, can you vouch for it getting better, or is it just as cliche going forward? Because, I don't know, the last time I played a game and I thought it was kind of cliche and cringy, things did not go well, so... Let me know what you think! In the description down below are links to support me, if you would want to, by either following me on places or through Patreon, stuff like that. Uh, also down there is subscribing, the subscribe, subscribe button, ring the bell, that helps me a lot. Liking as well. Um, in the cards, I have linked to some things that I've already done that you might like. And uh, stick around for the end slate, you'll see personalized recommendation. Uh, from YouTube, one, uh, and then the most recent video, this the answer, and uh, the comment of the day. So yeah, um, hope you liked it. <laughs> whatever the fuck. We'll see if this, this happens. I'm just playing whatever at this point. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. 
Uh, I'll see you when I see you. you Want to say bye, Bree? Bye. Huh? You did it. You did it. Bree. <laughs> ah, you fooled me.